Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Our Issues Birmingham. Today's guest is Keith Cromwell. Hello, Keith. Hi. How are you doing? Just couldn't be better. Thanks for having me. Keith is the executive director of the Red Mountain Theater, and uh, big things are going on in this town with the Red Mountain Theater. Yes, sir. And uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with Red Mountain Theater and an overview of where it was and where it is and where it's going. Wow. And that, you said this is only seven minutes? No, okay. no, no. <laughs> All right. Just so a short, we'll get there many, ultimately. Yeah, many people, and we talked about this a second ago, know that the organization is formally Summerfest. And so we're headed into our 41st year of serving the community. And there's a couple of things that um, pushed us to the name change. A cease and desist. Have you ever heard of that, lawyer? Yes. <laughs> They're yes. very motivating. There was They're a scary. Yeah, it was a jazz festival in Milwaukee, of all places, that had the copyright to the name Summerfest. And they said as long as we kept kind of small and under the radar, they were cool with it. I never knew this. We grew. We kept growing. Our national profile grew. They said enough. So we went through a two-year process to change the name to Red Mountain Theater Company. Doesn't seem like a name like Red Mountain Theater Company would take two years to get to, but it did. Wow. Um, and I had never set foot in the state of Alabama until 2002. I just came down to direct a show for three weeks, and I fell in love with this place. For what, uh, what theater then? Summerfest? Yeah, it was Summerfest then, and the production was Grease. It mm -hmm. was, I believe it was the first actual production at the newly beautifully restored Virginia Sanford Theater. Oh, yeah. Um, I think they opened with a concert with Betty Buckley, and then we were the first show. You know, Birmingham has tremendous local theater. Amen. I mean, I'm not talking about uh, Red Mountain Theater being having some exclusive mm. on local theater. We That's have right. Birmingham Festival Theater. TNT. Uh, TNT is big. Yeah. Uh, Carl was my buddy, and mm -hmm. uh, they're still at it. And yeah. uh, Sandra Tam Taylor has been on our show before. Yeah. I'm sure she's very active. Sandra in Taylor. I love Sandra. <laughs> she and I are good buds. I love her. Yeah, she's she's been on before to talk about our local theater. So yeah. uh, I, I note that uh, what's going on with the physical facility for Red Mountain Theater appears to be like no other local theater group that well, that that I see in this town. I hope so because I think it would be a disservice to the community if we were replicating something that we already have. And as we work on it, we've brought in theater consultants and really folks that have helped us model something that frankly is different to the nation. A lot of arts campuses, like the one Red Mountain Theater Company is putting into Parkside, are more found on a collegial campus or a university setting. And ours um, is specifically designed to serve the community and our kids, and especially the manner with which Red Mountain Theater Company has an osmosis between our professional wing, our professional shows, and our educational and conservatory program. Well, I would like to talk about the educational piece. So uh, what little bit of prep I did for, for being with you today was mm -hmm. I learned that you are offering classes there yes, sir. for young people to get into who are wanting to pursue careers. Uh, not, you know, when you think of local theater, you think of the actors. Mm -hmm. There's so much more that goes into it. That's right. So how does that process work if you, if there was someone out there watching our show that wanted to be a part of this new yeah. facility? Well, that's a great question, and thank you for understanding that there is so much more. My mom used to come and see a show I'd worked on for years and say, that was so cute, honey. I just want to <laughs> smack her. I mean, that, that took 16 months, Mom. But point being, don't smack your mom. we won't. I won't. I can't anymore. She's upstairs. Um, but we start with kids at five and six years old, and that is the most special place for me to, I love to observe those classes. And we have hundreds of kids that take uh, summer workshops and really study with us all year. And that is kind of all stair steps up to what we call our conservatory program. And it's really a pre-college level conservatory musical theater program. 
is it a, a go ahead it's audition based and uh, we'll we'll see about 160 kids audition for it every year and we have about 75 kids who spend uh, a full year of training with us they are ages between 9 and 18 and they are we create specific molded material for them to perform in our holiday spectacular and then we create a showcase to demonstrate their ability their advancement their growth uh, in the spring is there a connection i know you said parkside is the area that's over by regions field mm. uh, where there's a lot of growth and activity going on with railroad park yes, so you're in the heart uh, of hustle mm -hmm. I mean, there's a hustle bustle Act vibe over there. Amen. Um, is there uh, work between you and, say, for example, UAB and their theater department? <laughs> and what is that relationship? Or even the Alabama School of Fine Arts? I don't know. I'm talking You're out good. of school. You're good. You're like tossing me all the good balls today, and you what? didn't even. You said you didn't even research. <laughs> so one of the beautiful things that I that I want to really share and get out there is we see 17,000 kids with our outreach programs in the Birmingham City School Systems and the Jefferson County footprint. And of those 17,000 kids, we're, this is the real killer analytic. We're seeing them in 72 unique zip codes. And wow. to be totally frank, when 72 I 72 out of just the state of Alabama or Jefferson County? or uh, regional, regional, Birmingham and, and Jefferson County. Okay. So when I first got here, you may know this, but Summerfest was primarily serving our over the mountain community. So it was an artistic sandbox for wealthy primarily white children. Now the diversity and the cross-section of the community that we have coming together is, is the beautiful asset of really bringing humanity together. Most of our parents really articulate the joy they have in having their child be in an experience that's so varied. They're meeting people from all different religions, socioeconomic status, sexuality, religion, doesn't matter. Um, and to your point, one of the first calls I made was to Mike Warren because he had put that beautiful parking deck in at Children's Hospital right across the street from our facility. And I want to have osmosis across Third Avenue to serve the kids and, and the caretakers at Children's Hospital because they need a break. They need yeah. the art break. And then next call was to Ray Watts. And I said, look, the UAB campus, you, you're going to you're, you're on the shore of our curb, you know, so how can we flow together? And great relationships started with Kelly Allison and Valerie Aceta and the people that are running the musical theater program at UAB. All right, hold it right there. Yeah. We're going to come right back to it. You All got right? it. Don't go away. We're going to finish this uh, uh, with UAB in just a minute. This is our Issues Birmingham. Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. Keith Cromwell's with us today. I love that name, by the way. Cromwell Thank was you. Uh, one of my mentors, uh, David Cromwell Johnson, uh, was a lawyer who died way too young at age mm -hmm. 60. But uh, you, the name, hearing the name reminds me of him. So oh, that's a nice to David. Yeah. Um, so we got UAB on board and Tell me what else besides parking and other things that are going on. So we're yeah. working in conjunction with the theater department at UAB. Yeah. And does the School of Fine Arts fit in there somewhere? Well, beautiful question again. And these you're like, toss me every good ball. So I couldn't have loved Dr. Michael Meeks more. And sadly, he retired. And, you know, good for him. It was time for now, him. Now, he was... He, he was the executive director or what you would call the CEO or principal of the School of Fine School Arts. School of Fine Arts. Okay. So they've brought in a new director who starts, I think, in July or August. Um, but there's such obvious corollary there. Right now, uh, the School of Fine Arts doesn't specifically have a musical theater track. Wes is doing a beautiful job at the ballet. That's Wes Chapman, by the way. Yeah. And it's stories like Wes. Wes taught at the School of Fine Arts. He went off to work in New York, I believe it was at ABT, and then came back. And that's what Red Mountain Theater Company um, is doing as well. We're creating awesome artists that are going off to do amazing things and then coming back to us. You know, Jordan Fisher was a kid that we found in one of those outreaches. Jordan graduated our program. He went on to start doing Disney movies and lots of television. He then found himself in Hamilton. He's now a recording artist. Wow. He's going into Dear Evan Hansen as Evan Hansen in March. 
you know, we've got another young man who used to work for the Mayor's Division of Youth Services, was in some of our shows. We facilitated some auditions and an agent. He's now Simba in Lion King. Wow. And they on Broadway. Yeah. Well, he's on the national tour. Yeah. And they what I love is when I when I call out to those folks and say, Hey, can you come home and teach with the kids or do something special with us? They're they're here in a heartbeat. And that's so, beautiful. I take it that the mayor and the city of Birmingham are on board with with the Red Mountain Theater yes, and sir. its ideas. Yes, sir. And are they helping with some finances when they can? Well, I think it's always tricky they when need you talk to. about finances with the city. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's an understatement. understatement. <laughs> I agree, but I'm being very political. Look, Mayor Woodfin, Cedric Sparks, Jonathan Porter, all of the district, um, all the city council members, they are supportive of Red Mountain Theater Company and the way we touch. Um, the community, and I'm very much an advocate for profligating the economic impact that the arts have on our community. And so I'm just going to keep beating the drum. And right now, there's great support for what's going on and our location and our ability to serve multiple districts. So I'm just going to say amen and yes, they're okay. helping. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I hope, I, you know, I um, Mayor Woodfin's been a guest on our show, uh, and he's a regular. Yeah. when we can get him. Mm. He's very busy. Yep. He's got a lot of plates spinning. And, and, but the arts, to me, uh, under prior uh, regimes in our city, kind of got overlooked for a long period of time. Mm. And I think he's changed that dynamic to some degree. Now, he's limited with what he can do because mm. he's not the sole decision maker. Yes. So he has his counsel to work with. But you know what? I'm going to take some onus on that for all of us arts organizations. It's also our job to get into the departments and prove the value that meets their goals. If I go in and tell them what I want to do, it's less profitable than if I look at the mayor's promise and I look and say, here is how the arts at Redmond Theater Company can help you accomplish your promise. Well, the apprenticeship program, for example, right. that he's recently announced is, is a big deal. Right. I mean, the idea is to try to change the dynamic at the youth level. And when yes. I say the youth level, you, you mentioned five. You know, I'm thinking 12, mm -hmm. but you're hitting it even before we get to 12. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we've got to get the young people engaged in things other than sitting around smoking dope and firing off guns on New or Year's Eve. being on the phone. Yeah. And when I look <laughs> at... Steve Jobs ruined the world. Right. Well, <laughs> when, when I I'm look, a victim. <laughs> well, yeah, me too. When I look at... Um, I sincerely believe that the arts are going to save the future of humanity. And I'm not downplaying that. When our kids come together, they learn how to conflict manage, they learn how to deal with stress, they one-on-one -on -one communicate about challenges and overcome obstacles, and they do not go home, sit in a closet by themselves, and think about a gun right now. Yeah. And I believe that the more we can get kids that are different together, use the arts as a catalyst for conversation, we will change the world. In court, in the course of time. Amen. We have to be uh, patient. Yes. Not we my strength. We have to be patient. Huh? <laughs> not my strength. Patience? No, I'm not patient. You but want I, it, you want it you yesterday? Know. I do. I do. But I do agree with you that we have to, I have to learn that um, each child and each situation deserves its own moment to to blossom forth at its own pace. Like an incubation period. Amen. Hold it. We'll be right back. This is Our Issues Birmingham. Do not go away. Uh, welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. I'm talking to the executive director of the Red Mountain Theater, Keith Cromwell. Uh, you made reference uh, a few minutes ago to the arts campus. That's right. What, what distinguishes that? What is it? And what distinguishes that from what else we've been talking about? Right. 
Well, I think the cool thing about the arts campus is it is almost like a theater factory. I think if we think of it that way, you'll you'll get a better idea of we're going to have a full working costume shop, a full working scene shop. We're going to have an amazing lobby where we can have corporate events and several uh, bars. We know that our customers enjoy to have a drink with the show. Our theater will remain transformational and intimate, which is what our audience loves. Capacity. So 360 in the cabaret setup, wow. 450 in the proscenium setup. So That's pretty good size. Too. Yeah, then we have this beautiful audio, video, television suite. Um, we have our administrative offices. So it is all built to be a, a conduit for multiple areas of arts development and education. So if I want to bring the Rolling Stones to town for an intimate concert. You got it. I can, book it. I can book 450 people yeah. there. I'd love to know what our ticket prices are for that. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, I have to win the lottery first. Yeah. But, so it, it incorporates all of that. Everything under one roof. And we've been in a very painful situation of enduring 12 to 17 different locations right now. And consolidation's wow. going to be huge. And well, aren't you operating out of the... Uh, basement of the the pen. lower level excuse me the <laughs> lower the same level words. of the crest we, building we have that at our house yes sir we call it the the loft right. we call it a downstairs loft that's right well <laughs> the arts campus is scheduled to open this spring of 21 until then our programming will continue as usual we're getting ready to open in february porky and bess after that we're going to have some lighthearted fun with you're a good man charlie brown then a show that ran uh, in New York right when Hamilton opened, but it was called Bright Star and kind of didn't receive the um, attention that I think it deserved. Beautiful bluegrass score by Steve Martin. Oh, really? Yep. Then this summer, we've got Kinky Boots and Cinderella. Which really? shoe fits you? Just come <laughs> see them. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll take us all the way till when? August. Oh, my. Yes, sir. So you're busy. It's constant. It is constant, and it's exciting. And when will we be in the new theater? Spring of 21. I just had a meeting yesterday about that. Okay, so... They promised me June. So Brassfield and Gorey is our contractor, and they're pretty good at coming in on time, so... You need to cut a deal with them like the road people did. Right. Give them a $15 million bonus to finish early. Well, given the generosity we're receiving from the community, I'm not going to put squeeze anybody too I'm hard. I'm joking about that. <laughs> now, if I am in my viewing audience and I want to help fund your project, mm. I'm assuming that's doable. I First, should say so. I'm about ready to I mean, get it, my personal phone number out. It doesn't have to be a million dollars. No. It, it, can you just tell folks how they can participate? Right. And where's the website to go to and, and that sort of thing so they know they can be a part of it. Thank you. We do have lots of portals and opportunities on our website. It's uh, www.redmountaintheater. Theater is R E. T H E A T R E dot O R G. What, why do you say that? Theater. Theater is, uh, that means it's a location, it's a building. No, but why do you always say R E? Do people misspell it? Uh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> if you spell theater the other way, it's not going to get to us. So I, well, and if you have a problem with the email, call us at 205 324 2424. And I just want to say that um, while he said it doesn't have to be a million dollars, it would be totally fine <laughs> if it was. Well, or a half a million. <laughs> or $500 or uh, 10. Yeah. I just want the entire community to participate. Are we going to have opportunities to have like uh, 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 chairs like they yep. did at the sidewalk? Bricks, Fest? chairs. We're going to have all sorts of fun levels. We're going to roll all that stuff out in April of next year, which will put us close to about a year out from opening. Have we broken ground yet? Oh, we broke ground in a big way. They were talking about shovels and I thought that was super funny. And I was like, I don't feel like we're a shovel kind of group. So we got two huge <laughs> tractors and these were our troubles, our shovels. We counted down three, two, one, and they broke into this building. It was awesome. So they tore down an existing building. Yeah, because on the corner of 3rd and 17th, we're scraping those buildings because we're going to have 50 parking spots on our location. Thank God. You so. think that'll get it done? 
Oh, is parking's it? always a problem, is even with the Alice Stevens Center. Yeah, there's no uh, way 50 will be enough. But what's beautiful is the relationship with Don Logan at Regions and with Mike Warren at Children's, which we're already courting. So, uh, are you reaching into the high schools at all, aside from the School of Fine Arts? <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, Tell me how that works. You know, we I think of us as artistic water that we shove through any crevice that'll let us squeeze through. Mm -hmm. So we're having tremendous luck in midfield right now. Um, we've got a relationship with Huffman. We're working with Ramsey. There's a really neat opportunity for a production of the Scottsboro Boys, which was done on Broadway um, mm -hmm. a few years back, recently named one of the top 10 shows in the decade. And that show is going to be produced at the Shakespeare Festival in Montgomery, then play here with us, then go to Decatur and play a block away from the original courthouse. Wow. Epic. Wow. Really important. Wow. Lots of things in store uh, for uh, Red Mountain Theater. I had no idea uh, that y'all were scattered about in 17 different location. Mm. I don't know how you pull that together. Right. And I had also had no idea you had almost 30 full-time employees. Yes, sir. Uh, one of which is a very dear friend of mine, which is how I ended up getting you on this show right. to begin with. We all love Heather. Yeah, Heather was a, a, did a show with us not too terribly long ago about the work she does in Haiti. It's beautiful. It is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful for you being here. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot in store for Birmingham. You're going to hit the street about the time of the World Games. You know so it. So it should be action packed. Amen. We're uh, planning on being a major location for the uh, for the World Games. So you're thanks, on it. Thanks again. Thank you. This is Our Issues Birmingham. I'm Tommy Spina. We'll see you next Sunday.